Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Footy Consultancy podcast. We love footy so much, we just want to talk about England. E Today, me and Carl, we're going to discuss what we think our 23 should be for the Euros. And even deeper than that, what we think our starting 11 should be. So, we'll start with Mr. Carl. What do you see the 23 looking like? Do you know what it is? It's it's changed that many times over the last twelve months. Yeah, and I think it's um it's really difficult to pick a team based on form because I think with playing behind closed doors, there's so many different players that hit form. There's so many p- different players that seem to be flying at the moment, and then like even like the likes of a Jesse Lingard, it's come out of nowhere. Exactly. He has not a look in for 18 months anyway, and now he's on fire at West Ham. And, I, and then I start thinking, well, do you put him in based on what he's done in the last five games, or do you stay loyal to the guys that have been at it for the last one and a half years? Yeah. So, um, and that's a difficult one. Uh, I think there's one or two players in this squad that are, you got, I don't even think you can debate them. Yeah. But I think when you look at the rest of it, I think it's all over the place. Um, yeah. Watching some other podcasts earlier, and they were naming players that I wouldn't even dream about having in my England squad. Yeah, yeah. Um, and one podcast they were even debating if Sterling should be in because he hasn't played that well for Man City this season. And I was thinking, come on, guys. The guy was captain yesterday. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's such an opinionated thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but ultimately, I went with a team that I think is balanced. Yeah. Um, and I've went for two players in every position. Yes, similar to me. I've went for a 4-3-3 with two players for every position, other than goalkeeper. Obviously, I've went for three goalkeepers. Yeah, of course. What formation are you looking at for your team? Um, I'm looking at... I've gone with a similar setup, but I'm looking at a 4-2-3-1. Right. Because... No disrespect to the England players. If I look at the history of defenders we produce, they're not cut from the same cloth today. And I feel like yeah. they need a bit of protection. So especially with the offensive play that we, we're trying to, you know, to get at the moment, I feel like we do need that protection in front of those two centre-halves. So, so I'm, 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 I'm on the thought trail of that. If you're not great at defending... Don't yeah. defend. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I'm, I'm looking at. I think England should play on the front foot and go at every team, no matter who it is, no matter if it is Belgium or France. Mm. Um, because I don't think we can sit off against teams. I don't think we can try and sit and defend, because I think it's been shown in the past when we do try and protect leads in big tournaments, mm. particularly against Croatia, we we'll crumble. I think we're. I would, I'd rather play on the front foot, but. I totally, agree. I totally agree with you because I'm not saying not playing the front foot. I'm just thinking about the counter attack. If we play on the front foot and then leave Harry Maguire, for example, exposed, which we've seen from Man United, it's like okay. I think he needs a couple of players in front of him to 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 stop that from happening. So it's just certain scenarios that that can happen, and you know I agree we should go for it, go against any team. Historically, we've done that in the Euros anyway. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, that's the best approach. Well, what we'll do is we'll both go through with 23s and we'll have a chat about, first of all, who's different in with 23s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we'll look at with starting 11s and we'll talk about what's different in with starting 11s. So I'll go with my 23 first. Yeah. Goalkeepers, I don't really think there's up for much debate. I've went for Henderson, Pickford and Poe. Yeah. Who've been the three England goalkeepers for the last campaign or so um, all three of them I think are can be inconsistent I think all three of them have got a mistake in them yeah definitely but I also think they're the best three keepers that we've got and although you know Pickford has had a questionable 18 months at Everton yeah he's never put a foot wrong for England yeah I agree so I think you know, he's still got to be considered um and Henderson and Pope, yeah, they're probably the, the, 
the other two that I think are at the, at the, playing at the best of the game. Henderson's a funny one because he hasn't played that much first team football this season because of De Gea, but he is back in the squad. He has played in the Man United squad lately and he's done very well. But goalkeeping is, is that type of position. Yeah. You know, you be only one of them. A couple yeah. of years. Yeah, so it's, it's a funny one. Then me defenders, this is where I know there's going to be some questions. My two right backs I've went for is Trippier and Walker. Okay. And the reason why I went for both of them is Kyle Walker's been outstanding yeah. and he plays for the best team in the country. And if yeah. you're good enough for Pep, you're good enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> simple as that. It's as simple as that. And Kevin Trippier was one of our best players in the World Cup. Yeah. And again, if you're good enough for Atletico Madrid and Diego Simeone, you're good enough for me. Yeah. The other ones, Rhys James, yeah, he's very good. And I think you showed last night how good he is. Mm. But again, it was against San Marino. Yeah. And he's no longer first choice right back at Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. They switch it around. They make changes. So that's one way I think, well, he's good, but maybe it's a bit too early. Yeah. Trend. He's had a shocking season. Yeah, um, it's a position that is it's in demand, isn't it? Yeah, it's unfair because you know not long ago we're talking about oh you've got Lamptey, you've got Trent, you've got Rhys James, you've got Wan Bissaka. Yeah, but all of them, I don't think are as good as Trippier and Walker. Yeah. I think you need some experience. You can't just put a full youth team out. Yeah. Because we've got some amazingly talented young players in this England squad. Yeah. We need to have certain areas of the pitch where we can shut up shop and say, well, George, we've got experienced players there. So there me two right backs. My two left backs, I think most people are agree with this, is Luke Shaw and Chilwell. Yeah. The two standout English left backs over the last two years. Mm. Yeah. Luke Shaw surprised everybody with how good he's been at Man United this season. Yeah, he's been amazing. I don't even, you know, with maybe Zinchenko, he's been the best left back in the league, not just the best English left back. Yeah. Ben Chilwell, very good, but again, he's not first choice at Chelsea anymore. Marcus yeah. Alonso started playing at wing back. Yeah. So again, I'm picking Chilwell based on how well he's done. He's done well for England. He's done well for the last two years. But Luke Shaw, definitely in centre back. I went with four. Yeah. The John Stones. Standout centre back, I think most people agree with that. Yeah. Then went with Harry Maguire, Connor Cody, and Pyro yeah. Mings. Yeah. And what I've tried to do is I've tried to keep my England squad, not just the fantasy England squad for me. I've tried to think of the most likely players that are gonna go because Southgate trusts them and picks them. Yeah. And then went with the ones that I think are the better ones. Yeah. So I'm not gonna put anybody in the squad that hasn't played for England. I'm not yeah. going to put somebody in that, oh, it could be a loose call-up. Mm. I went for the guys that have been in and around the England squad lately and yeah. who I think are better, the better players. Mm. Um, in midfield, the two holding midfielders I went for is Declan Rice and Jordan Henderson. Yeah. Um, and Jude Bellingham. Okay. But Jude Bellingham, I think, is a bit more adaptable. Yeah, and definitely. then three attacking midfielders I've gone for is Phil Foden, Mason Mount and Jack Grealish. Yeah. Then forwards, I've went for, with six forwards. The two out and out centre forwards I've went for is Harry Kane and Calvert Lewin. Yeah. And the four wide forwards I've went for is Raheem Sterling, Jaden Sancho, Marcus Rashford, and Saka. Okay. Surprise call up there. Well, I think if people are Going to talk about top form players, Saka has been Arsenal's best player this season. Yeah, definitely. Um, and he's he plays every minute when he's fit. He's carried Arsenal. He's got something that other players don't have. Mm. And I think you know if you want to take somebody to to a tournament that can bring something that teams don't expect, he's the type of player because I think Rashford, Sancho, and Sterling are all quite similar. Yeah. You know, they do offer different things, but they are quite similar players. Saka is completely different from them. Mm. And I know you could probably play Grealish in a wide forward area, and you could probably play Ford in our mount there. Yeah. But I'd like to play, see them play more centrally to be playmakers. 
yeah. and I'd like to keep the wide forwards as wide forwards rather than playing players out of position. So that's my 23. Mm. I do think as well, when it comes to Saka, he's unique in the sense that he can play left back, left wing back, left forward yeah. in the 10, on the right. You know, he's, he's something, offers something different, definitely. Definitely um, adaptability. Yeah. Um, I've gone with three goalkeepers, the same Pope, Henderson and Pickford. Yeah. Although you've got others that are on the fringes. Sam Johnson got called up last night. Um, you've got McCarthy who plays every week for Southampton, you know, and never gets even a, a mention and Darlow for Newcastle. But I've gone with those three because they've been in and around the squad. It's unfortunate for Carl Darlow, who's been Newcastle's number one keeper all yeah. season. He has yeah. one bad game that put Dubravka back in. And yeah. then that's when the England squad was called up. I think Dolo might have been considered if he yeah. was still playing with out in Newcastle, but definitely. And my defenders are going with Luke Shaw and Ben Chilwell. Yeah. And um Trent and Trippier. Yeah. And I've also gone with for my centre backs, stroke wing back or third centre half if they change system. Yeah. Carl Walker, John Stones, Connor Cody, and Harry Maguire. Yeah. Now, I would actually start Walker probably at, at fullback over the other two. Yeah. But, you know, I think that he also can play, tuck in and play at centre half, and he's experienced in both positions. So, when I look at England's choices for centre back, like I don't see much. If I compare him to to Eric Dia and to Mings, I'm, I see Carl Walker as being better than both of them in that, in their own position. So um, midfielders I've gone with similar, but I've kind of gone with two of a similar role. So I've gone with Rice and Henderson. Yeah, Jordan Henderson. And James Ward-Prowse. Right. Uh, Phil Fodden, Deli Ali, and Jack Grealish as the attacking midfielders. My forwards are Harry Kane, Marcus Rashford, Sterling Sancho, Calvert-Lewin, and Jesse Lingard. Yeah. Now, people will probably be surprised that, you know, I put Ali and Lingard in there. But the reason why I've gone for them is, number one, their experience. Mm -hmm. They've both gone to that World Cup semi-final. And sometimes as a, as a football player, you've been there, you've done that. You know, they're still fairly young. They're in their mid-20s. And, yeah. you know, I see that if you've gone through that pain and through that experience, you want to bounce back and do better. And England can't continue to just keep building for the future, building for the future. One thing that Pep done really well with, with Phil Fodden is that he held him back. He needed one game to win a league title, and he said no. And that developed a hunger inside of him that he's going to earn his place in the team. And there's so many good young players, Jude Bellingham. There's, you know, there's Mason Mount himself, who I would leave out. But if they get left out and feel that disappointment, now they've got a bounce back yeah. and show I'm ready for the World Cup qualifiers and I'm ready to go to the World Cup. And where I'd have about Ali Ali is yeah. barely played for yeah. the season. I, I agree with you. And I look at, for example, it's going back a bit far, but when Ronaldo, you know, and I'm not comparing him to Ronaldo, but Luis Ronaldo didn't play leading up to the 2002 World Cup but ended up top goal scorer. And sometimes, you know, you, who's going to produce that moment? Who do you feel like is definitely going to produce that moment? And with some of the, the young English players, I'm not yeah. sure what Mason Mount's best position is. I'm not sure if he can play attacking midfield. I'm not sure if Grealish can play attacking midfield. But I know that Ali can. Yeah. That's the difference. And with Grealish... The reason why I picked him, I look back to Glenn Hoddle's 98 squad and he couldn't pick Paul Gascoigne for obvious reasons, but he picked Paul Merson. And although Grealish can't shoot from outside the box like Paul Merson, he has that level of creativity. 
Yeah. And you need something that's outside of the box, something different. And I think Grealish has the overmount for me. I think that Jesse Lingard was the big one for me. Where yeah. did I go with Jesse Lingard or did I go with Saka? Yeah. And yeah. the only reason why I've chosen Saka over Lingard is that mm. Saka's been doing it week in, week out. And I think yeah. he deserved it. Yeah. And I think with Lingard, not to say he doesn't deserve it. Mm. He's had five good games at West Ham. Yeah. Or six good games at West Ham. That's six good games in nearly two years. Yeah. And, I'll, and I, I just think, you know, we're also preparing for the future. If I'm a young player and mm. somebody like Lingard strings together a few good games and gets chose ahead of us, I think, well, come on. I've never let you down for two years. Why am I getting chucked out the squad? Because he's had a couple of good games. So I think it's a difficult one. It's a balance. And I know that you should be picking your best players. But yeah. Lingard, Jordy, you know actually... It was more between Lingard and Jude Bellingham than it was between Lingard and Saka. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think if you're playing week in, week out of Borussia Dortmund and you're in the quarter final of uh, the Champions League, yeah, you've got to be considered. You've Definitely, got to be considered. I, I agree with you. And I see him as such a gifted and talented player. But then I look at what, what Germany do. Obviously, we're not Germany. England's historically always brought a young player in the squad. You know, from 96, Rio Ferdinand, then he went on to Michael Owen, then he went on to, you know, Theo Walcott. Like, historically, it's great exposure for that that young player that's special to go with the squad and get that experience under their belt. And it is a massive debate, like you said. For me as well, it was between moving Grealish into the forwards and putting Jude Bellingham in there, yeah. you know, and other players that have been really good but they're battling for relegation. Like Ruben Loftus cheek has been brilliant for Fulham. And it's like, is Bellingham better than Loftus cheek I couldn't say that, but he's in a better team, playing in higher competition, higher level of competition. And, you know, he's slipped in like a glove. He's gone from the championship to the Champions League. And, yeah. you know, he, he's just stepped it up and, you know, if I had to make a change, it would definitely be that. I'd definitely sack off Lingard and put in Bellingham. But then what we'll do is we'll go over starting lineups. Obviously, we've got different formations. So I've went for, like I said before, 4 3 3, but with yeah. only one holding midfielder. Mm. Um, the, the midfield I've chosen is very young and very inexperienced. Yeah. Um, and that's why I wanted the likes of Kyle Walker in. So it's Henderson and goal. Yeah. Uh, I think he is the best of the three. You yeah. know, I know I said earlier about Pickford, but Henderson for me is the better of the goalkeepers. Yeah. Kyle Walker right back, Luke Shaw left back, John Stones and Harry Maguire centre back. Mm -hmm. uh, Declan Rice is the holding midfielder. Yeah. Mason Mountain Phil Foden sitting in front of him. Yeah. And then front three of Raheem Sterling, Harry Kane, and Marcus Rashford. Yeah. And I I like it, you know, because although you said your midfield's inexperienced, it's got a lot of creativity in there. You know, and I don't think the they're all high quality players, and I don't think the opposition would know much about them, and it might spring a surprise on some teams. You know. Well, the thing about all three of them is there's mm. no denying that all three of them have had an absolutely phenomenal season. Yeah. Um, Declan Rice, you know how much of a fan I am at Declan Rice. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing we couldn't get Sue Check to play next to him. And then um, we've got Mason Mount, who's been Chelsea's best player, in my opinion, this season. Mm -hmm. And you've got Phil Foden, who has been an absolute revelation at Manchester City. Yeah. And I think if we can take anything out of Manchester City and implement it in an England squad, it can only make us better. Yeah. Because they are the standout team in this division, in the Premier League. Wow. And other than Bayern Munich, I think they're the standout team in Europe. Yeah. Um, I think Bayern Munich are probably better at the moment than Man City. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, you know, if Bayern Munich play in Manchester City, I wouldn't put my house on uh, Bayern Munich beating them. Because I think on any given day, if you get City playing at their absolute best, they will beat anybody. Anybody. The nature of football today is it's almost as if as soon as you score that first goal, you've got the advantage. 
And with the teams that are left in the Champions League, it doesn't really matter who you are. Paris Saint-Germain, Real Madrid, you know, I feel like all of them have the quality of player to, to get through any fixture and Man City fall into that bracket. So, yeah, that's... And obviously, Harry, the, the players have said that I think that you, there's no debating, in my opinion, yeah. is John Stones, because I think he's been the best centre-back in the, in the Premier League by yeah. a, a, a long way. Raheem Sterling and uh, Harry Kane. They're the three for me that... I, I'd be shocked if anybody left them out there, England team. Yeah. The rest come up for debate. You know, Rashford is not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. But I like the way he plays. Uh, and yeah. I think he'll stretch teams. And I think playing him with Luke Shaw, that's the relationship they developed in Manchester United, yeah. can only be a good thing. Then I've got Raheem Sterling and Kyle, and Kyle Walker on the other wing, a relationship developed at Manchester City. Yeah, you've got John Stones and Harry Maguire that played together in the last World Cup. Yeah, so you know I'm trying on certain parts of the pitch to have some familiarity and solidarity because yeah. again in the middle it is quite inexperienced. Yeah. You know I don't think Mason Mount, Foden, and Rice have ever played together as a three. Yeah, so that is a big one. You know I could have went safe and I could have put John Henderson in there. Yeah, yeah. But again for the type of football that I would like to see England play on the front foot, I want to be a young, quick, dynamic team. And I won't want to take I won't want to take the tournament by surprise. Yeah, yeah. I think um it's an interesting selection and you know my selection's probably a bit different from that, but it bears a lot of similarities. My my goalkeeper is Henderson. Yeah. And like like you said, I think he's the best keeper all round because he's got the shot stopping ability, he's got the leadership in his box. He's off his line. He's good with his feet. And, it, you know, with Nick Pope, he's got some of those elements missing. And the same with Pickford. He, he's a bit rash with his mentality. But, yeah. you know, um, my back four is pretty much the same as yours. Carl Walker right back, Stones yeah. and Maguire at centre-half. And Luke Shaw at left back. Yeah. And one thing about Luke Shaw and Carl Walker this season is there was always question marks over their defending. And this season, they've actually really developed in that area. Like, 1v1, they're defending their own box, you know, tracking back and, and making it difficult to get past, you know. And going forward as well, like, they're both brilliant. Like, they've got amazing pace. And, you know, I feel like they'll trouble any team in the world, so... You know, that foundation that they have, they're all very experienced. They've all been challenging for titles at some point in their career. So, you know, except for Henderson, of course. But, yeah, I went with that back four. I've gone with two holding players in midfield. And the reason why I've done that is, you know, like yourself, I want to be England to be playing on the front foot. Yeah. But, you know, I'm a Man United fan and I've seen... Man United play on the front foot for the last two years and really get hurt on the counter-attack against other teams. And Harry Maguire is somebody that needs protection. If he's playing against the best teams in Europe, in the Euros, and they end up countering England, he's going to be in big trouble. So that's why I've gone with Henderson and, and Rice yeah. holding in midfield. And I, I feel like Rice is a really excellent player, but I don't know if he has the discipline to sit as a one because he does like to get forward a little bit as well. And I feel like Henderson does have that discipline and experience to sit there and do his job. So that's why I'd, I'd have them paired together. And Phil Foden in front of them in the 10, I feel like mm -hmm. he has the vision, he dribbles with his head up. He's always, you know, observing the game and he can go by himself at times as well. So he's got goals in him. He's got the elite level of ability and athleticism. And I feel like, he needs to be given a platform to shine. Yeah. You know, um, and like you said, if Pep trusts him, then <laughs> I trust him as well. You know what I mean? Then I've gone with um, Sterling on the right, Kane down the middle, and Rashford down the left. And I feel like if you were to ask any defender in the world, do you want to play against Marcus Rashford? Unanimously, you'll get a no because he seems to put everyone in trouble. 
obviously as he's not everyone's cup of tea because sometimes he has issues around his decision making. You know, does he want to run behind or not? Does he want to pick up the ball on the halfway line and try to be a playmaker and things like that? He's best when he's on the front foot, running in behind, you know, getting that players 1v1. And, you know, if he can simplify his game a bit and just know when he gets on the ball, these are the things that expected of you, then he's going to be a lot more effective and he can bring England some glory. And it was really tough because... Jaden Sancho's amazing. He's got something that not many English players have. And his final ball, when he cuts inside and threads a through ball, like no other England player's got that. And I feel like somebody who gets that week in, week out is Harry Kane when he's playing with Hengman Son. They got that connection. And I feel like, you know, Jaden Sancho could get that relationship. And I feel that. Yeah, I'll bring him on. And if he can deliver that, then it will be at the expense of either Sterling or or Rashford at some point. But, you know, you've got three real quality players there that can deliver. I think as well, with, when you're talking about the, the wide forwards, yeah. they need to be, the wide forwards for me, need to be able to contribute goals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because Harry Kane of late likes to drop in. Yeah. Almost like a playmaker as, as well. Yeah. And if you've got wide forwards that don't contribute too many goals, and the one I would say for me is, is Jack Grealish. Yeah. He plays left wing for Aston Villa. He doesn't score enough goals for me. I know yeah. he's a phenomenal talent, but if Kane's going to be dropping in, we need to make sure that these two wide forwards are going to be able to score. And Raheem Sterling and Marcus Rashford are very good goal scorers from wide areas. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Jaden Sancho is very similar to that.